Hi, this is Shadi, and today we will be discussing Gracie Academy and Fada Academy, both of their lineages. Um, the Gracie lineage has been a topic of discussion for a long time. Did they actually train under Maeda? What did Maeda particularly teach them? Did he teach them the ground? Um, if it was his students, what did they actually teach them? They meet Maeda, etc. So today we will actually do the same, but for the Fada lineage and particularly go back to Louise Franza. We will try to make uh, the best uh, neutral and educated guess possible by examining all the evidence and all the you know oral tradition but all that was possible through today's sponsor Josh Simon. Josh Simon is a third degree black belt under Helson Gracie himself with a passion for history Josh Simon decided to launch his own project of commemorating the old jiu-jitsu pillars of Brazil like Jacinto Ferro, Cheo Omori and Donato Pires and of course writing uh, articles where he would examine all the points of views and all the evidence regarding a particular figure or a particular event. I urge you to go to the website if it's not for a really greatly designed t-shirt it could be for a very good read and now currently he ships worldwide so the case of Luis Franza is very interesting and very much conversation worthy in my opinion Luis Franza the according to you know the general narrative the oral uh, tradition his story goes as follows throughout the 1910s he trained under Soshihiro Satake, whose real name is actually Nobushiro Satake. And then in the 1920s, he would move to Belém do Parra and train under Maeda himself. So to say that he trained under Maeda himself and not secondhand like the Gracie, it would have to be somewhere uh, around 1923 and onwards because that's when he finally settled down and opened the school. Uh, unlike Gracie, where they learned under Jacinto Ferro, which was his student, and then later on through uh, Donato Pires, which was Jacinto's student. So here we have Franza learning directly from two great Japanese masters. Then later on, uh, throughout or the early 1930s or the first half of the 1930s, that's where he moved to Sao Paulo, Brazil, and trained under Gioji Omori, also known as Jeo Omori which in my opinion is the biggest jiu-jitsu pillar and the biggest contributor to what we call today BJJ. And finally, uh, when he moved to Rio de Janeiro, that's when he met young Oswaldo Fada and thus the lineage and the story began. But if we would go through the claims of Luis Franza uh, deeply, we would see that it's on very shaky foundation. There is little, almost none of the evidence that would support all these claims of the 1910s, 20s, and 30s, and you know, being an apprentice of these great masters, because his story seems almost too good to be true. He learned under these the greatest, um, and you know, he, he's easily the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu student in a sense. So um, the fact that there's little evidence or none that, that in my opinion, should not dismiss his entire story. Many people went under the radar uh, easily. There was no federation where they document your name, your number, your, it give you a license every single year, you pay for it. That stuff was not like today. And also, uh, you know, it's history, it, it's jujitsu history, it's not political history, it's not military history where everything, every event would be documented like a battle where a meet, for example, between two monarchs is documented. It's martial arts, we're trying to get the best guess possible. No one truly knows. So, and finally, you know, the thing with uh, being arguably the greatest apprentice learning under these great names. You would hear his name, in my opinion, far more, but he's rarely mentioned. Uh, when it comes to challenges, uh, students against students from different academies, I would say he was rarely referenced or rarely in the conversation debating other uh, 
teachers and really barely involving himself in the whole combat politics in a sense but again he wasn't the only uh, one for example Jacinto Ferro was very quiet up until you know we started discussing him more you know up until recently it was only Maeda 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 but now you know because he himself stayed in the limelight even though he was a teacher even though he trained jiu-jitsu etc so again you have these two factors that would play almost against Luis Franca but that's not to say that it's you know impossible or somewhat you know untrue or dishonest or just false uh, claims you have for example the Gracie family when they went against the Fada team they were very courteous the uh, the challenge went uh, very good according to Hela's writings for example it wasn't like built on so much animosity or um, there was back and forth uh, in the newspapers like for example Rufino dos Santos with the whole provocation and the whole thing ended very badly it was none of that so if it was like a quote-unquote fake lineage and fake claims by Luis Franca you would see for example the Gracie family making all sorts of articles or at least mentioning this but there was none of that so where does this leave us um who is Luis Franca no one talking about him badly and also very little evidence supporting him so there was actually someone that was able to present a lot of good evidence in my opinion that would also explain the Gracie attitude in a sense and it's none other than Robert Drysdale himself you see uh, when Josh Simon was actually compiling this uh, article writing it trying to look for as much as evidence as possible he actually contacted Robert Drysdale and checked with him to see what he had to say and actually Robert Drysdale presented really good evidence in my opinion for this particular mystery he presents two newspaper articles the first one being from November of 1938 it was a Luta Livre match between Gaucho uh, from CRF against Luis Franca, parentheses, A. Gracie, A. Dot Gracie, which means, stands for Academia Gracie, saying that he was a student of the Gracie Academy from Rio de Janeiro that was run by Carlos and Elio. And another article from 1956 that referenced a fight of Talvanes Falau who was a student of Luis Franca and the article itself states that Franca was previously a student of the Gracie Academy so you have these two great lineages Fada and Gracie that here according to this evidence supports that they all came from the same lineage so they're essentially brothers or cousins not, not cousins but essentially from the same uh, root which is the Gracie Academy so um, again that's not to take it with you know full faith and finally believe it because back then you know errors with you know the names uh, the venues the background of fighters etc sometimes they were wrong uh, I would say wrong information but due to the fact that they are apart from each other and still stating that he's a Gracie student somewhat uh, puts a lot of weight into the claims of Robert Drysdale uh, so you can believe it to a very large uh, extent but nonetheless stay a little bit doubtful because again this is not history this is a newspaper article a lot can go wrong etc so where does this leave us again this is a very interesting topic um, I cannot say for certain anyone knows but here is my take on it this is what I have to say about it after researching a lot being wrong about many things correcting myself reading more finding out more finding out other points of views history as much as we love it and as much as we love it to be black and white it never is there's tons of gray when it comes to history and in my honest opinion this is my take on it I would say all of it is true let me explain you see he was a Navy officer he traveled he would go from city to city as you would see from his life story 
and then training under these Japanese masters. So he would claim that I was trained under them. You can easily say that, but that doesn't mean that he stayed there for years and years and years and years and established this really deep relationship. It could simply mean that while he was stationed there, he was a temporary student. Very little time to document, very little time to go on challenges. Uh, he had his job as a Navy officer, etc. That's like me, for example, coming up with the claim that saying, you know, I was taught under Hiroyuki Akimoto himself, former world champion. And it's true, it really is true, but that was during a judo camp that happened in 2020. That doesn't make me like his really uh, ingrained, like deeply rooted pupil of his. It just means that he taught me a few things and that's it. So you see what I mean by gray? It's true, but to a very limited extent. And then later on, you would see he would go to Rio de Janeiro and uh, then he would keep traveling and see this is when he would easily go and train with the Gracie family, the back then the biggest um, academy of jiu-jitsu at the time and he would train and then had that challenge and it was documented. So I would say it all of it can be very well true but they differ into the degree of uh, truthfulness. So take from that whatever you want uh, if you have anything else to add please let me know down below also if you have further evidence again please do share it and please do not forget to check out josh simon's shop and articles in the description below and consider supporting me on patreon this was shandy and as always thank you for listening